Hello everyone, it's Dave here from Safe Decks. And I'm Sophie. And we are bringing to you a review of Summer in Mara. And it's going to be a more discussion kind of review. Because Sophie, you're the one that's been playing this. Yep. How long have you put into it? So about eight hours. Yeah, eight hours, okay. So you haven't seen everything there is to see in the game, but you've seen enough to give a impression, Good impression of it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So um, what was it that got your attention to this game? So I was drawn to this game because um, it looked like a cross between Stardew Valley, Wind Waker and Animal Crossing with a, with a beautiful Ghibli art style. Okay, so what is the story of this game? Um, so you start off with a cutscene showing a ship explode and a baby getting rescued by a purple lady and her name is Yaya Haku. You then cut to years later showing the child being taught about farming, crafting and cooking and so on so you can learn the game's mechanics as Koa learns life skills. After a while you find out about a mysterious doorway that opens with four keystones, one of which you have. There is another time jump and in this time there is a plot development that the game doesn't tell you about and I won't spoil it for anyone but there is something I discovered that hinted at it and I thought this was an effective way of discovering yeah, no, this revelation. I was, I was there with you when we discovered that Yeah, and it was just something there that told you what might have happened. And it was more hard hitting finding out that way than being actually told. Yeah, I quite liked how I did that. I then found an adorable shell-like creature glowing in the sea but sadly the camera went really weird at this point on two different occasions and it was a real shame because it was the first time you were meeting this character. When you eventually meet this creature, her name being Napapo, and you decide to help her and you set sail together and that's all I'll say about the story for now. Okay, so that's sort of how the game sets itself out. Mm -hmm. So how does the game actually play? What is this game? So the gameplay is really not too demanding. It has a really relaxed feel to it. The farming mechanics are what you would expect them to be. You grow crops from seeds, you water them and you harvest them. You can even put manure on top of them to make it grow quicker. There are tools you unlock through crafting materials such as a hoe which can be used to prepare the ground and harvest, an axe for chopping down trees, string for fishing. You have a whole arsenal of tools and they build up as the game goes along and you can upgrade them such as the hoe where you can clear dry shrubbery so that you can make more areas where you can plant. As you'd expect, chopping down trees gives you wood, hitting rocks with your hammer gets you stone and ore, and one nice aspect in the tutorial is that Yaya Haku teaches you how to give back to nature by planting a tree after you've cut one down, and I thought this was a really nice message to include in the game. To craft items, you can go back to your house, and the game makes it clear which materials are needed and how many you have. It works in a similar way when you're cooking. When you have a recipe, all you need to do is bring the right ingredients to the kitchen and watch the magic happen. You can also hit trees and bushes to make fruit fall out. When it comes to fishing, I felt it was generally good, but slightly harder than other games I'm used to. I have a level of fishing in games, Stardew Valley being the best and 51 clubhouse games being the worst. I'd say that Summer and Mara's fishing is slightly above middle. You need to use the analog stick to keep the highlighted area of the fish until it's caught and I found that some attempts were more challenging than others. The controls took some getting used to and unfortunately the tutorial was really inconsistent with what it showed you how to do. There were some prompts like telling you how to hit trees and pick up fruit. When it told me to equip an item without telling me how to do it, it got a bit frustrating which didn't lead to a good first impression. At one point I was prompted to water the crops and I pressed every button I could to try and activate it but nothing happened. I do think this was probably a glitch because later into the game it has been no problem at all I've been getting prompts on how to water. Running in the game is really amazing, she moves really really quickly. I accidentally discovered how to run and it really was a game changer. It felt like everything was moving a bit quicker. Like with Stardew Valley you have an energy meter which I didn't notice at first so you can imagine I was quite surprised when my character suddenly passed out. After that however I was aware of it and I made sure I ate enough and got enough sleep as well. So as you can probably guess from what I've said so far I didn't have a good time with the tutorial. It wasn't very well presented for the most part and it gave me more questions than answers about the game. Another example is certain tools you craft can only be used in certain contexts such as the torch. I was prompted to craft one and then when I went to go and find it it was nowhere to be seen. So when I went to light the beacon I wasn't sure how to light it but it turns out you have to find a fire source, set the fire and then you can light your torch. I remember that bit and it, the game didn't really prompt you. No. It didn't even confirm you had a torch on you still. The menus are really not easy to navigate. Even after several hours in I'm still having to think about which button to press to get onto the menu because it's either plus or the up button on the d-pad and that messes with my mind. Just have it as one and then I'll remember it. <laughs> 
The other thing is that the map wasn't easy to navigate either. Oh, I remember that map at the beginning, yeah. The map at the beginning isn't actually the map of your home island, so when you bring up your menu and you see that map, you think, oh, there's loads on this island, but actually it's of Qualis, not your island. Yeah, because it, it shows a load of characters on there, yes. but there was no characters on the None island there, so that was a really weird to bring up a map of somewhere else yeah. without really telling you it was somewhere else. Definitely. So, um, after all this, you must hate this game, right? No, I really like this game. I've really enjoyed everything after the tutorial because it's been much more smoother. I remember I was sitting there watching you play the tutorial and honestly, everyone, who, everyone who's actually started this game up and only seen the beginning, the tutorial is a perfectly tells you how not to play the <laughs> game, pretty much. It did look like a much more smoother experience after that, yeah. so... Yeah, don't let the tutorial put you off, it's not a good representation of the rest of the game. So, uh, so after that tutorial you have a boat you can use. Yeah, so you fix up the boat and you're able to sail to Qualis. Once you get there, a series of fetch quests begin. And a lot of these require you to take seeds and grow them or craft items or cook food on your home island. Now I can see that this might get a quite frustrating sailing back and forth so I tried to streamline this by activating all the quests I could where I'd have to grow crops or craft items or cook something and I'd do that before I went back to the home island. Like in Stardew Valley you can just skip days by going to bed and waking up the next day but I found that I wanted to just collect things like fruit, shells and fish and make a food offering before I went to bed just so I had lots of things to sell on me when I returned to Qualis. So um, what is the sailing actually like in this game? I really really like the sailing in this game. It reminded me of a sped up Wind Waker. Wind Waker is one of my favourite Zelda games. You can even reverse the boat and I love this because I like to try and parallel park the boat. When you're on Qualis you can either pay to sleep at a hotel or you can sleep on your boat and this just activates the next day. So you don't have to sail back to where your house is to sleep? No. You can just do it at the boat. That's really, yeah. that streamlines it doesn't it? Yeah. So a few hours in, you eventually get a map of Mara and you can activate this by sailing into unknown territory. Once you do this, you get a visual of your position and you can also see um, diving points and places where you can fish and also a pirate ship. Oh, what's the pirate like? Pirate was really nice. Was I he? Yeah. Surprisingly nice. Yeah, he liked my boat and he wanted to have a race. Oh, did you win? Well, no, I haven't done it yet, but I hope oh. there is a race. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, you mentioned diving just now, what's that like? So that was one aspect of this game where I felt that I was looking forward to and it really didn't meet my expectations. There wasn't any indication of what controls to use for diving and I kind of had to work it out myself. You dive down, you open the treasure chest and you find items, some of which you need for the fetch quests. So when you're given a fetch quest yeah. for an item that requires diving, it doesn't tell you that you need to dive for that item. No. It relies too much on you discovering them yourself. Yes. Yeah, so... Although I didn't find it hard looking for them. What about the actual presentation of the game though? What are the graphics like? So I really love the art style in this game. I'm a huge Studio Ghibli fan. Once the game started, I was getting a lot of Ponyo vibes from it. The first opening scene of Ponyo, with all the fish under the sea, it just made me think of that when I saw the characters. The environments create a really relaxing atmosphere and the islands vary in their size and content and it was always exciting to discover a new one. I really liked walking through Qualis. It reminded me of when I was walking through a seaside town in Greece and it looked suitably populated and gave me a feeling of how the community is in this world. I really like towns and games like Yokai Watch and Wind Waker because I find them the most interesting parts. The 3D character models look good. I'm used to seeing that sort of thing in 2D but I felt that it was translated okay. It didn't look as good as something like Ni no Kuni but that's to be expected because it's a lot lower budget. I love that you can change your backpack and clothes in this, it adds a bit of personalisation to it. <laughs> What's the music like? The music's very calming as you'd expect from a farm simulator. There's pianos, guitars, ukuleles. It really gave me an island style feeling. There were times where a track would suddenly end instead of looping and it would pause for a time and I haven't really worked out what the rule is for how long it's silent for. I didn't find it too bad though because I quite like hearing the sound of the sea and the birds and seagulls. Okay so um, how much does this game cost? So the game costs £19.99 or $24.99. I think this is too high of a price. Yeah it's a bit steep. Yeah. yeah. 
It's not a short game, but when you start comparing it to games like Stardew Valley, which is cheaper and overall more polished, it's really hard to justify the price. You won't beat it quickly, and like I've said, I've sunk nearly eight or nine hours into it and there's still plenty to do. Anyone who's interested in this game, I'd say wait for a sell. It did launch with a 10% discount, but I would say it needs at least 25% off. Okay, so what are your overall thoughts on the game? Overall, I'm really enjoying this game a lot. I do understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea. The fetch quest could get very tedious to some people, and those looking for a more action-packed, eventful game will not find it here. But for someone who wants a more relaxed experience with an absorbing atmosphere and just wants to enjoy this world, you'll have a fun time. It's managed to keep me glued for it for two hours straight, and it felt nowhere near like two hours. Whenever that happens in a game, I feel like it must be doing something right. Okay, yeah, so if you had to give it a rating out of 10, 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10, so it's a, it's an okay game. Yeah. It's tailored for a specific kind of player. Me. And you, you <laughs> are that type of player. So if you like more relaxing games, you know, sort of thing, just something to lose yourself in without anything demanding, this does the job. This is the one for you. But wait for a sale. <laughs> I think that sums it up quite nicely. Thank you very much for your review there, Sophie. Um, it's okay. Uh, anyone who else out there who's played this game or taking a look at it, hopefully we've helped you make a decision there. Let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts on this game is. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a like and also hit that subscribe button to join the party and keep up with our future videos. So thank you very much, Sophie. Goodbye to goodbye. Sophie. And goodbye from me. I'll see you in the next one.